Welcome back everyone to Montgomery County's Engage at Home, brought to you by the County's Caregiver Support Program. We have a special guest today, someone who represents Montgomery County's Fire and Rescue. Jim, would you please introduce yourself? Sure, thank you for letting me come on, Lily. Uh, my name is Jim Resnick. I am a, a contractor and I'm program manager for the Fire Rescue Department's uh, outreach for seniors. Uh, we call it Senior Outreach and Education, and it's part of our Community Risk Reduction section, and I'm thrilled to be here. Thank you, Jim. So I've known you for some time, and you and your team do amazing work. What I'm also impressed with is how everyone is stepping up during COVID. It's, it's been an extraordinary time. Um, I, I have been a first responder and actually up until the beginning of March, I actually was responding on calls as a volunteer, uh, firefighter and emergency medical technician. Uh, due to my age, due to some medical conditions that I have and family concerns and so on, I've backed off from the first responder role, but I've still been able to watch from a distance my, my brothers, my sisters, in fire and rescue and law enforcement and so on, just doing incredible things, the health department, the rec department and so on in the county, people stepping up and as you say, uh, meeting these unusual challenges with just incredible ingenuity. Mm, well said. So I know that you've put together an amazing presentation today. So let's take a look at it. Thank you, Jim. You're welcome and I'm thrilled to be able to share this presentation with you guys. So what I wanted to talk to you and your caregivers about is what community risk reduction is. I mentioned that I'm part of our senior fire safety, uh, fire outreach and education for seniors program, but I'm also part of a bigger group of folks and we like to talk about the full force multipliers in the fire department and that is that everyone, every career, every volunteer, every uh, EMT, every paramedic, every firefighter is a force multiplier because we all need to make sure that we're engaged with trying to reduce the risks in our community and that's what we're all about. And uh, I've already mentioned a little bit about myself. I've got about 45 years with Montgomery County Fire and Rescue Service um, and I also have a dog but he's not a Dalmatian. Uh, I wanted to really thank you, Lily, for all of your work throughout all of this, you and the rest of the folks in the Department of Health and Human Services. And I'd like to give a shout out to my boss, Beth Ann Nesselt, who is the manager of the Community Risk Reduction Section for the Fire Department. And of course, our Fire Chief, uh, Scott Goldstein, who has just been an amazing supporter of all of this. Community Risk Reduction is the type of a program where we can't do it alone. And what, I, what you see at the bottom of my screen is a whole lot of letters, Health and Human Services, Housing and Community Affairs, Montgomery County Police, Rockville City Police Department, Tacoma Park, Gaithersburg City, Maryland National Capital Park Police, the State Police, the U.S. Park Police, the Rec Department, Department of Transportation, and the list goes on and on. We can't do our alone, and we're thrilled to have such strong and wonderful supporters throughout all of it. So, is a little bit more about what is community risk reduction, um, and what does it mean to you, caregiver? What does it mean to your family, uh, the folks that you're taking care of? Uh, we're going to talk specifically about the epidemic of residential fires and preventable injuries. With all of those, we'll go through things like common causes, prevention strategies, which are so important. And what I'm talking about with prevention strategies are very, very basic things that you and I do in our home that are either inexpensive, free, something along those lines. Um, I'm gonna spend more time talking about fire safety because with all of our partners out there in the community, the fire service are the ones that are talking about the fire threat. Um, you just don't hear about that from public health officials, of course, who are very, very concerned right now with COVID-19 and everything else like that. But I'm going to focus more on the fire things like that. We'll go through some tools for you in your home to help keep you safe. Um, what I've got here on the screen is just a, uh, a smattering 
of some of the significant fires that we've had in Montgomery County. And this is all also within the last couple of months. This is since uh, COVID-19, and this is far from a complete list. But these are everywhere. These are in Germantown and Gaithersburg. These are in Leisure World and in Chevy Chase. They're, they're throughout the county that we've had these fires. As you see the causes, there was one arson fire that was pretty significant, uh, but also things like unedited cooking being the common theme in a lot of these and an overloaded and improperly used surge protector. Uh, one of the things that we've noted during the uh, COVID-19 time is that people's homes are doing double and triple and quadruple duty. And what I mean by that is a home is more than a home now. The home, if you have children or grandchildren that you're taking care of, might be school, might be daycare, might be a summer camp in the home that otherwise wasn't going to have those responsibilities. Um, we're cooking more meals in our home. We're not going out for meals and things like that. Um, if, if you uh, practice religion, your home is now your church. It's your synagogue. Uh, it's your mosque. It's whatever you have. We're doing all of these things in our home, and that's putting a lot of stress on our systems, which can result in fires if we're not careful. Um, here's an example of a big fire that we had back in the end of April in Kensington, which caused over a million dollars damage. It displaced a family of four and their dog. Thankfully, smoke alarms worked and people did get out of the home. But community risk reduction is more than just fires for the fire department. We deal with things like bicyclists and pedestrians who are struck, the vehicle crashes, We've seen a decrease generally in the number of crashes since COVID-19 hit, but the severity of these crashes ramped up significantly. And then unfortunately, as, I, as we've started to hit the warmer weather now, people are seeking to get out and about and do things, and we've seen a significant uptick in river rescues and unfortunately drownings, not just in the Potomac River, but also in the Patuxent River up near the Howard County line, and we're very, very fearful that we're gonna see an uptick in the number of backyard pool drownings, even baby pools and wading pools, if parents and other caregivers are not able to pay full attention to what's going on. So what we do in community risk reduction is we prepare for the, the unimaginable, the unwanted, the things we really, uh, we're fearful of having happen in our communities, like car crashes, like fires, and so on. We want to mitigate wherever possible. Um, whatever steps we can take to prevent that fire, that crash, that injury, that illness from occurring, that's what community risk reduction is. And we have to stay focused on this constantly, and it's a, an evolving, changing uh, risk out there for our community. If we know that severe weather is coming, if we've got another round of severe thunderstorms, like what I understand they're calling for either tomorrow or later on this week, we need to be prepared. Do I have flashlights instead of candles in my home? Because the candles will pre uh, present a risk. Um, do I have food, water, in case I, I'm unable to have those things available because the water system is knocked out or something along those lines. So it's that constant preparedness that we want people to have. This is a screenshot of a presentation that I did for one of our senior villages. And it's just to show that we're still out there. Despite COVID-19, we're still actively engaging with the communities. So let's talk some fire prevention strategies real quick. Uh, the number one cause of fires, not just in Montgomery County, not just in Maryland, not just in the United States, but in the world, the number one cause of preventable residential fires is cooking. So whether it's indoors or outdoors, um, and I've got the musical notes there, uh, kind of like Patsy Cline sang back in the day, we want you to stand by your pan. It's not stand by your man anymore. It's stand by your pan. If you've got something cooking, on the stove, in the oven, in the microwave, pay attention to it, keep an eye on it. That's one of the best prevention strategies. It's, it's not that difficult, it's just something you have to think about. Candles, I already mentioned about, are a big problem in any kind of an open flame. 
whether they're in fireplaces or anything like that. And I'll say that the fire service loves electric flameless candles. They're pretty, they can set the mood for whatever you want. Some of them are even scented, but they don't start fires. Electricity and electronic devices are a big cause of, uh, of uh, fires in homes. We need to make sure that we uh, keep an eye on toasters, toaster ovens, microwave, coffee makers, anything that creates heat can potentially cause a fire. So keep an eye on the devices. Um, also, we've had an issue more recently as people are using a lot of cleaning materials in their homes. If they don't dispose of them properly, then those materials can end up causing fires. And what I'm talking about is rags that have been soaked with some kind of a solvent or something like that. We need to dispose of them properly and safely. Uh, I also want to give a quick shout out for fire sprinklers, residential fire sprinklers. Uh, they work uh, based on heat, not on smoke. So there actually has to be a fire. They're quick response. They put down the smoke, the fire, the heat, and they allow for the survival of the occupants. And if someone is thinking about getting a, a retrofit to their home, it's not killer expensive. And in fact, there's more and more incentives now, whether it's through tax breaks or other things like that, to try to make your home safer. So if you own a home, if you own a house, a townhouse, uh, something like that, which is currently not sprinklered, and you're gonna be doing some other work on the house anyway, you might wanna look into the cost of um, getting the home sprinkler protected and it can be a lot safer and it's not that expensive. Uh, this is a just demonstration of the difference between a sprinklered home and a non-sprinklered home. This is a demonstration in which they had a room with a couch, other furnishings, uh, just normal furnishings, and they had a candle that fell down the couch in both of these uh, rooms side by side at the same time. The, the room to the left, the smoke alarm activated in 35 seconds after the fire started. The sprinkler activated at 58 seconds and it caused approximately $250 of damage and it was almost all water damage. All of the occupants that would have been in that room or that home would have had time to get out safely. The room on the right, the smoke alarm activated in 37 seconds. And so a back door flashover occurred at one minute and 49 seconds. So it went from no fire to a fire situation which no one would be able to survive in one minute and 49 seconds. The damage was complete. Everything in that house, everything in that room, was destroyed. Um, and a death rate in a non-sprinklered building is 87% higher than a non-sprinklered building. It's, it's devastating. So fire prevention and fire safety are two different things. Fire prevention is what we can do to prevent a fire from occurring, and fire safety is what to do if the fire does occur. Um, we already spoke about a lot of these things, about keeping an eye on your cooking, not using candles. Uh, if you're going to smoke, which we discourage, smoke safely. Uh, dispose of things properly. Um, if there's medical oxygen, we cannot have any open flames at all near the oxygen. Fire needs oxygen to burn, and when there's more oxygen in the air, the fire will be hotter and it will burn faster. There's no safe way to smoke in the home when oxygen is in use. Um, keep an eye on your electrical outlets. Like I said, with homes doing all these extra jobs, that's a big deal. Um, have working smoke alarms on each floor of your home and inside of each bedroom. We want people always to sleep with your bedroom door closed. Turn on a light if there's an emergency and if the house might be on fire, feel closed doors before you open them. With all of that being said, we want everyone to have a plan, and a plan is actually maybe two or three plans, depending on your living environment. Plan A is the best plan. 
plan C is the worst plan, and plan B is kind of in the middle. Plan A is the best. Get out and call 911. If we're aware that we're our home or our apartment building or wherever we are might have a fire in it, get out and then call 911. Don't call from inside the house. Get out and stay out. Go to your designated meeting place. And on your way out, if you had the opportunity to close other doors, please do so. Plan B, if I can't get out of the house because I'm physically unable to, then I want to get behind a closed door and call 911. If you look at that graphic up in the top right-hand corner of this slide, this is a bunch of experiments that were done by the uh, Underwriters Laboratories Fire Safety Research Institute. And it shows the difference between a bedroom where the room was, or the door was closed, or a bedroom where the door was open. And it's a phenomenal life-saving difference. So if you can't get out, get behind a closed door and call 911. If it's too late, there's no way to get out, and I feel like my life is in danger, then you might want to consider going out the window. Now, if I live in a 17-story uh, condominium building, going out the window from the 17th floor is not a reasonable or a good answer. If I live in a single-family house and the second floor window is 20 feet up, it's a lousy answer going out of the window. That's why we want to have working smoke alarms. That's why we want to have a plan about how to get out, where to get out, how to do it, what to do, and to do it quickly if there is a possible fire in the home. And as you see on this slide, there are some other things that we can do. Keep the door closed. Try to be strategic. Don't break the window. Don't break the glass. And before anyone goes jumping, maybe you can yell for help because there's someone maybe nearby with a ladder or something like that. Some other important information we want people to keep in mind, fall prevention. Falls are the number one call that the 911 center takes for the fire department in Montgomery County. It's not fires, it's not car crashes, it's people who fall. And fall prevention is such an important thing. Going back to the fact that the fire service is really the person talking about fires, we're also the ones that tend to, tend to spend the most time talking about burn prevention. Uh, we've got to make sure that we are cooking safely, that if we're around any kind of an open flame, we're doing that safely. Infection control is a huge issue these days, and that hand washing, covering your mouth, using proper uh, distancing and things like that are so important. And now that we're in the summertime with the high temperatures, Hydration is so important. And again, especially as we talk about either seniors or small children, hydration is such an important thing. Today, it's gonna to be 90 degrees. Throughout the rest of the summer, we're gonna to continue to have heat waves. The file of life, which you see down in the lower right-hand side of the screen here, is an important thing that the fire department has today, even during COVID-19, and it's so important that someone have a fill out an up-to-date, a completed file of life in their home. It needs to be filled out in English and put up on the refrigerator. It's not a bad idea to have a second form, maybe in your purse, maybe in the glove box of your car, somewhere if you do get out and about, so that people will have this important medical information. The file of life contains information about your medical history, your allergies, any medications that you take, who are your emergency contacts? What phone number can the fire department or the police or the hospital call if we need to call to say that someone's been involved in an accident or they've become ill? So someone can get the file of life and other information by going to this, the sources that you use on this uh, final slide here. It's got my contact information with my email but if someone wants a file of life, they can call 311 in Montgomery County. They can uh, go to 311, it's MC311 on the county's website, or they can call our uh, senior outreach line, which is 240-777-2430.
And Lily, I think that that uh, kind of shows the, the depth and the scope of what we talk about when we do mention community risk reduction. Okay. Jim, that was an amazing presentation and there is so much that you and your team do to keep Montgomery County residents safe. So we've got to the end of our interview. What are the key takeaways that you would like our viewers to remember? Wonderful, thank you for the opportunity to share this. One thing is we wanna make sure that people have that completed file of life. You can call 311 or the other uh, contacts that I gave you before. And we also want everyone to have in their home working smoke and carbon monoxide alarms. They need to be less than 10 years old and they need to be tested regularly. And people say, oh my gosh, Lily, I hear people all the time. I don't know if I can get up on a ladder. Well, I wanna show you, this is my Swifter and there's my smoke alarm. And without having to get up on a ladder, I can push the test button. I'm working smoke alarms in my home. And I think that that is a, a, a double whammy good piece of information because we really don't want people climbing up on ladders and chairs trying to reach them. You know, it's yeah. very loud to have that in your ear. There's the likelihood of falling off um, with that happening is pretty high. Yeah, and so for, for all of the residents in our community, it goes back to that community risk reduction. What can we do safely to make sure that we're not going to have any of these problems in our home? And Lily, again, thank you. And thanks to all the caregivers out there that are doing the job 24-7. We recognize the hard work and how important it is to your families and to our community that folks are doing that. So thank you. Excellent. So thank you, Jim. This has been a terrific interview. I want to remind everyone that this is Montgomery County's Engage at Home, brought to you by the county's Caregiver Support Program. During these times of challenge, I want to remind everyone to stay calm.